Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is the one hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. Now you can see I've drawn out the fairly long base formation here and the new rising pennant formation that we have. We may break down below this or we may break out above it but this is the normal sort of bullish formation you have when you're in a rising market. Now so far it's been my contention that the manipulators have been hands off. You can see though that we're starting to get into a rising volume situation. So we may be looking at an attempt by the powers that be to make another attack. I don't know but I think we can pretty much argue that we've put the bottom in barring some extreme smackdown. Now gold is roughly similar. If we pull up the, we'll get rid of the volume and pull up the MACD. And you can see we've crossed through the zero line here on the MACD. It appears a little bit overbought just depends on how we draw the line so it may be due for a correction back to silver not quite as overbought still trying to reach a point of being overbought now if we go way way out this is going to be the chart we're looking at the key chart here is going to be this monthly you can see that we have a move to the upside in the red line. We had a brief one here and other than that we really haven't had any positive moves in this red line. It's pretty much been a continuous fall all the way from the May 1st smackdown. I believe this is going to cross and I believe that when it does it's going to be very very bullish. You can see the support of course it goes back to the Bear Stearns top Bear Stearns being absolutely key because at that time it was the key silver short. At that point the torch was handed over to JP Morgan and they seem to be the key short. Now there was some speculation as to whether it went over to City, uh, but it appears to still be with them. So we really haven't even moved, although this blue candlestick seems big relative to what we've been seeing lately it's actually just a very very tiny move you can see the size of the move that we had this one blue candlestick right here goes all the way from about 37.50 to about 50 we're talking about a $13 spike there so we really haven't entered the volatile stage yet but we still haven't even crossed over so I'm suspecting that when we get this crossover when we finally get this crossover of the monthly MACD that's when we're really going to start to see the fireworks that was pretty much the time back in here when we started to see a serious move up in the price of silver the last time so we'll wait and see now I want to go over and look at some of the unrest that is going on here we want to start off with the Ukraine and the situation is getting worse now these things are very hard to dissect and I think there's a reason why that's the case because nothing really is as it appears so let's read a little bit of this and then I'll comment Kiev Ukraine security forces fired on masses of anti-government demonstrators in central Kiev on Thursday in a drastic escalation of the three-month-old Ukrainian crisis that that left the country reeling from the most lethal violence since Soviet times. The opposition said at least 70 and as many as 100 people were killed in the gunfire. The shootings punctuated a traumatic day of mayhem that followed a quickly shattered truce with enraged protesters who paraded dozens of captured police officers through Kiev's central square. Despite a frenzy of east-west diplomacy and negotiations, there was little sign that tensions were easing. President Viktor F. Yunukovych 
lost at least a dozen political allies, including the mayor of the capital, who resigned from his governing party uh, of regions to protest the bloodshed. Mr. Yanukovych conferred with three foreign ministers from the European Union who had come to press for a compromise solution practically within sight of the main conflict zone in downtown Kiev. Municipal authorities put the daily death toll at 39. So some serious violence going on in the Ukraine. You can see here is the capital. Here is Independence Square. And you can see the area that's taken by the protesters. And uh, the police are standing them off. Uh, a lot of things have been burned. So you can go and watch the videos. I wanted to take you down to a key statement here that doesn't have much comment on it, but I think is very, very telling. And this just describes what happened in the square. Supporters of the opposition earlier this week overran an interior ministry garrison near Lviv and captured its armory. It was unclear whether any of the commandeered weapons were being used on Thursday in the fighting in the capital. The part of the square back under the control of the protesters after the fighting Thursday was an otherworldly panorama of soot-smeared paving stones, debris, and coils of smoldering wire from burnt tires. From the stage on the square, a speaker yelled, Glory to Ukraine! And the crowd yelled back, Glory to its heroes! That echoed the slogans of the World War II era organization of Ukrainian nationalists and the Ukrainian insurgent army guerrilla armies that battled the Nazis, Poles, and Soviets in an ultimately futile quest for an independent Ukraine. The protests began in November when Mr. Yanukovych rejected a trade and economic agreement with the European Union and turned to Russia for financial aid instead. So there's your key sentence. This is what is behind everything that you're seeing. Now, I'm not siding with this leader here. I don't I assume he's completely corrupt. Certainly not siding with the Soviets. But it seems very clear to me that what you're looking at is something that the Western powers, probably the EU and America, are fomenting an attempted revolution overthrow of this gentleman who is... Uh, or you don't want to call him a gentleman, but this, this leader who is saddling up to the Russians rather than the EU. That seems to be very clear to me what's going on there. Now let's look over at Thailand. Now I want to point out Obama came out today and uh, talked about the use of force against the protesters in the Ukraine. And we have a similar sort of thing here. I showed on the blog, if you saw it, a protester in Thailand who lobbed a grenade at the police line and ultimately we saw one police officer's leg blown off. We don't know how many died. So serious violence going on. Thailand unrest court prohibits use of force against protesters. Two government orders deemed unconstitutional as violent protests continued against PM Yinluk Shinawatra. A Thai court has ordered the government not to use force against anti-government protesters after clashes between riot police and demonstrators left five dead and nearly 70 wounded. The Civil Court of Thailand ruled that some orders issued by the Prime Minister and a Special Security Command Center under an emergency decree were illegal because they would violate the protesters' constitutional rights. Do you have a constitutional right to lob a grenade at the police? That's absolutely absurd. The prohibited orders included bans on gatherings of five or more people and the use of certain roads by the demonstrators. The court also prohibited the government from using force to crack down on the protesters. Okay, so that's what's going on in Thailand. It's a complex story. You have, in every one of these stories, you have corrupt politicians on all sides of the thing. So. There's no point in even trying to take sides with the politicians, but the current prime minister is trying to bring back the former 
leader of Thailand who has been charged with corruption in the past and he's now in exile. There's also this incredibly stupid rice support scheme that they have there where they were paying people to grow rice twice the market price which ultimately caused an oversupply of rice and then with a collapse in the price of rice worldwide the government was stuck with an enormous amount of overpriced rice. We're talking about bail-ins now to cover bankrupt banks because of that. So a whole lot of stupidity, but the main point is, and of course we have what's going on in Venezuela and Argentina. Now how do you how do you sort this stuff out? Well, you can't sort it out. My, my gut instinct is that for regimes like Venezuela and Argentina, if it is indeed the interest of the United States to see them fall, I don't know if it is or not. For leaders like that who are so idiotic, such as uh, the guy who's leading Venezuela, doesn't even understand the most basic economic principles, these types of people will defeat themselves. There's no reason to even undermine them. They're going to collapse their own country. Uh, that's my opinion about Argentina and Venezuela. I may be wrong on that. They're just corrupt, incompetent socialist dictators who are going to fall. But now, what's going on in the Ukraine and Thailand, in my opinion, is something completely different. And for the West to take some kind of moral high ground against these other governments that are cracking down on violence is absolutely absurd. Now, let me show you. This is a video from Occupy Wall Street. I think you remember that. And most of the cities were cleared very quickly with pre-dawn raids. And it was very difficult to get any coverage because reporters weren't allowed in. So let's watch a little bit of this. Dozens of Occupy demonstrators were arrested during swift crackdowns in two cities. In Oakland, clashes between protesters and police and riot gear lasted most of the day. Police fired tear gas and beanbag rounds to clear the area near City Hall Tuesday night. Earlier in the day, the same methods were used to shut down the makeshift city, where about 170 protesters had been living the past two weeks. Police moved in. They were pelted with rocks, bottles, and utensils from people in the camp's kitchen area. City officials say 97 people were arrested, mainly on suspicion of misdemeanor, unlawful assembly, and illegal camping. It was a more peaceful scene in Atlanta. SWAT teams and riot gear were joined by police on motorcycles and horses to clear protesters from a downtown park just after midnight. They'd been camped there for about two weeks. More than 50 people were arrested. Before police marched in, protesters were warned several times to vacate the park or risk arrest. Meantime, at the unofficial headquarters of the Occupy Wall Street movement, businesses and residents near New York's Zuccotti Park are demanding something be done to discourage protesters from urinating in the street and making noise at all hours. The neighborhood board voted Tuesday night to pass a resolution that proposed off-site portable bathrooms funded by local donors. The resolution also requested that loud noises like the blasts of air horns and group chanting be limited to two hours during the day. John Belmont, Associated Press. So there you go. Protests in the United States, nothing in comparison to what is currently happening in the Ukraine and Thailand and other places around the world. Of course, for Americans to criticize other governments dealing with their protests is absolutely the height of hypocrisy. It is ridiculous when we have a government that is amassing rounds of ammunition that no one can even count, passing draconian laws which give the president even the power to kill any citizen deemed a terrorist. The hypocrisy is so thick, it's, it's just unbelievable. I can't even describe it. But I want to read you this speech by General Smedley Butler. He was a very big anti-war protester came out of the military and this is what he said war is a racket war is just a racket a racket is best described I believe as something that is not what it seems to the majority of people 
Only a small inside group knows what it is about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few at the expense of the masses. I believe in adequate defense at the coastline and nothing else. If a nation comes over here to fight, then we'll fight. The trouble with America is that when the dollar only earns 6% over here, then it gets restless and goes overseas to get 100%. Then the flag follows the dollar and the soldiers follow the flag. I wouldn't go to war again as I have done to protect some lousy investment of the bankers. There are only two things we should fight for. One is the defense of our homes and the other is the Bill of Rights. War, for any other reason, is simply a racket. There isn't a trick in the racketeering bag that the military gang is blind to. It has its finger men to point out enemies, its muscle men to destroy enemies, its brain men to plan war preparations, and a big boss, supranationalistic capitalism. It may seem off for me, a military man, to adopt such a comparison. Truthfulness compels me too. I spent 33 years and four months in active military service as a member of this country's most agile military force, the Marine Corps. I served in all commissioned ranks from second lieutenant to major general. And during that period, I spent most of my time being a high class muscle man for big business, for Wall Street, and for the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer, a gangster for capitalism. I suspected I was just part of the racket at the time. Now I'm sure of it. Like all the members of the military profession, I never had a thought of my own until I left the service. My mental faculties remained in suspended animation while I obeyed the orders of the higher-ups. This is typical with everybody in military service. Speech originally delivered in 1933. So that's, that's the truth. War is a racket. And what we're seeing around the world right now is a propaganda racket that's going on. This is a struggle, in my opinion, between the East and the West, between the EU and Russia. It's centered on Ukraine right now. And we don't know how this is going to turn out. But my suspicion is not very well. The world seems to be heating up with a lot of these hot spots. There's no question in my mind that the people behind all of these are the bankers and their minions in the military and the intelligence agencies fomenting these types of protests around the world and arming the protesters and funding them. So back to silver, it looks very bullish for silver and gold. Of course, we would expect if prices reacted to crisis the way they normally have in the past, gold and silver would be much, much higher. But we know we're in a different time. We're in the time of world propaganda and mind control where the wars are being fought over things like who is the person who is on the right side of a protest and whether we can break into someone's computer system. These are the type of wars that we're seeing. Will this end up in some type of outright military conflict? I don't know the answer to that, but things are definitely heating up and we'll talk to you next time.